it's time to relax, grab a drink, pull up a chair by the hearth, and have a seat in the Skald Circle to listen to the tale of the death of Koshite Deathless from Slavic folklore, as told by Casimir. And my Nelgen. As a special treat, this story is being told in the style of our live, in-person shows. While this means the story may not be as word-for-word as described, we are certain you will love it. Before we begin our story, we wanted to remind you that we release new tales for free every week. Our tales are released on Wednesdays. Find out where you can hear them on our website at thescaldcircle.com. And be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way you'll never miss out on one of our enchanting tales from around the world. Additionally, if you'd like to hear more of our stories and some of our witty banter, this is your reminder that we perform live stories on Twitch every three weeks on Thursdays. You can find more information about that on our Facebook page. Just click on the Events tab. In addition to a reminder about our live Twitch shows, we have some exciting news. The Skull Circle will be at the Bristol Renaissance Fair, July 13th and 14th, 27th and 28th, August 10th and 11th, and August 31st through September 2nd. We would love to see you there. So, far off in the mystical land of Russia, there was a prince by the name of Prince Ivan. And you see, Prince Ivan lived all alone, as his parents had died and his sisters had all gone off and gotten married. And so he was very lonely inside of his parents' castle. So Prince Ivan made a decision. And that was, he was going to go out and find a wife. And so, Prince Ivan wandered through the countryside, through the forest, through the valleys, and one day, he stumbled upon a battlefield. There were bodies everywhere, broken buildings destroyed, siege equipment, and it was an utmost display of destruction. And so he yelled out at the top of his lungs, What is the cause of all this? Who caused all this destruction? It was Princess Marevna. And when Prince Ivan heard this, he decided that this Princess Marevna was the woman that he wanted to marry. So he wandered through the battlefield until he found her war camp, strode up to her command tent, threw open the flaps and said, Princess Marevna. Yes. I have come to take you as my wife. <laughs> You've come to take me as your wife, and what good are you? Are you good at things like um, housework and cleaning and things like that? Oh, yes, um, I'm very good at all of those things. Oh, perfect, then let's get married. And so they did. They got married, and it was a very lovely ceremony. And they retired back to Princess Marevna's castle. But you see, after a short amount of time, Princess Marevna got bored, and she wanted to go back to making warfare. So she took Prince Ivan aside and told him, Ah, uh, Prince Ivan, I'm going back out on the battlefield. But before I go, there is something I need you to do. Take care of the castle and take these keys, but do not go to the topest tower and open the door. Oh, that seems very simple. I will do that. Now, Prince Ivan wasn't always the brightest boy. He was sort of like a child where when you tell him not to do something, he immediately went to do it. So when Princess Marevna left, he immediately went to the top of the Tavis Tower, opened the door, and inside found something very strange. There was a man who was chained up, old and emaciated. He went up to him and said, Uh, what are you doing in the closet? Uh, I'm so very thirsty. Please, get me something to drink. Uh, of course. So Prince Ivan ran downstairs, got a ladle, filled it up with water, ran back upstairs to the closet, put it to the man's lips, and the man began to greedily drink. He was still so very thirsty, and Prince Ivan gave him twelve more ladles of water, until suddenly the man reached forward, breaking the chains, and said, <laughs> You fool! It is I, Koshai the Deathless. I have been held captive by Princess Marevna for many years now. And now that I am released, I will get my revenge upon her. So Koshai the Deathless broke free, jumping out of a nearby window of the castle and riding away on a magical horse he had summoned. So Prince Ivan made his way to the camp, where Princess Marevna was held. He found her tied up on a pole, but uh, she looked at him and she wasn't very happy. Prince Ivan, I 
gave you one thing that you are not supposed to do, and what was it that you did? Um, I, I may have uh, opened the closet. And what exactly is your plan now? Uh, I'm going to throw you on my horse and we're going to ride like hell. Well, we may as well go do it now. So Prince Ivan threw Princess Marevna on his horse and began to ride away. Now, far away in the distance, Koshai the Dessa's horse turned to him and said, Koshai! <laughs> what? Prince Ivan has rescued Princess Marevna. Really? Yes. Oh, uh, do we need to go now? Well, I think that we would have time to sow the fields with wheat, allow the weeds to grow, grind the wheat into flour, make the flour into dough, allow the dough to rise, bake it in the bread and eat it, and still catch him in time. So, not really, but just to be safe, we'll go now? We should go get him. All right. So, Koshai the Deathless began to ride away, and it didn't take him very long to catch up to Prince Ivan. Whereupon, he circled the horse, knocking him down, and said, Prince Ivan. Uh, yes, Koshai. You have insulted me by rescuing Princess Morevna, yeah. but because you have freed me, I will be merciful, and I will spare your slight three times. However, if you rescue her two more times, I will kill you. Now, Prince Ivan crossed his fingers and said, Yes, of course, I definitely won't do that again. Thank you for your generosity. Good. Now, run along. And Prince Ivan did. It wasn't long before Koshai tied up Princess Marevna again at the camp, and Prince Ivan began to cry. It's his greatest achievement ever. Now, it was important to note that Prince Ivan, well, crybaby, was also a little stubborn. So about, um, you know, an hour or two later, he's riding along and goes, I should go try to rescue my wife again. And he goes back to Koshai's camp. Koshai conveniently isn't there again, so he takes his wife, throws her back on her horse, and begins to ride away. Now, far away in the distance, Koshai's horse turns to him and says, Koshai! Uh, what? Prince Ivan has rescued Princess Morevna again. Again? Yes. How stupid is that boy? Apparently very. Uh, do we need to go now? I think that we would have time to sow the field with barley, allow that to grow, turn it into mash, allow that to ferment into beer, drink the beer, and then wake up in the morning hungover and still catch him in time. So, not really, but we should go now just in case. We should do it anyway. So Koshai the Deathless began to run off, and it wasn't very long until he found Prince Ivan, knocked him off his horse again, grabbed Princess Revna, and then said, Prince Ivan. Uh, yes, Koshai. You have once again done exactly what I told you not to. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you do this one more time, I will kill you. Prince Ivan nodded emphatically and said, uh, Of course I won't do that again. Good. And Koshai the Deathless took Princess Revna, took her back to his camp, and then tied her up again. Now, a few hours later, Prince Ivan was feeling feisty after having a good cry. You really would think that he would move his camp at this point. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. If you're Koshai the Deathless, why worry? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Prince Ivan, feeling stubborn, goes back to Koshai's de camp, and Koshai is conveniently not there. I mean, he has busy evil sorcerer business to do. I wish I had busy evil sorcerer's business to do. I uh, have to join the club. <sighs> one day, one day. Prince Ivan rescues Princess Marevna, throws her on his horse, and begins to ride away. And far away in the distance, Koshai's horse turns to him and says, Koshai! What now? Prince Ivan has rescued Princess Marevna again. Again? Yes. Oh, goodness. Well, uh, do we need to go now, I guess? I think we should just go get him. Yeah, let's just get it over with. And so, Koshai and his magical horse rode up to Prince Ivan and Princess Marevna. And... When they caught him, what is it that you think Koshai did? Um, knocked him off his horse and then gave him a stern warning. Oh, uh, no, he killed him and cut him into pieces. <laughs> and that's the story. You would think so. <laughs> but conveniently, Prince Ivan's sisters were married to wizards. Convenient. And they felt a disturbance upon fearing their brother-in-law die. And so they turned themselves into birds and they flew off in all directions of the world. One of them went to go and gather the pieces of Prince Ivan. The other two went to go and gather the waters of life and the waters of death. And so they gathered together the pieces, put them all back into the correct order, 
sprinkled the waters of death over the body to put the pieces back together, and then the waters of life over the body to bring Prince Ivan back to life. And so, Prince Ivan woke up rather startled. <laughs> I know I would if I was dead. What, uh, what happened to me? Uh, you were dead. Uh, oh, that's, that's not good. No, that's not good, is it? Uh, but they... Koshai still has Princess Maravna. I have to go and rescue her. No, before you go and rescue her, you need to get a magical horse that's way faster than the one you have now. Oh, that would make sense. It would. You can get one of those from Baba Yaga. Uh, However, to get there, you need to go across the magical river of fire in Russia. All right. Uh, how am I supposed to do that? Ah, take this hanky and wave it in front of the river. That will make a stone bridge, and then you can cross it without dying. Oh, all right. That makes sense. Yeah, good. And so, Prince Ivan set off east into the mystical land of Russia until he came to the aforementioned River of Fire. And so he took up his magical handkerchief and waved it in front of the river. And just as his brother-in-law has told him, a stone bridge appeared there, and he crossed it rather safely. And once he got to the other side, he waved it again, and the stone bridge disappeared. Now, Prince Ivan, as we have established, is not um, always the brightest boy, not the smartest bulb in the bunch, as it were. Uh, when he went on his journey, he didn't pack any provisions, and you know what that means. He got a little bit hungry. So as he's going around in the forest after the magical river of fire, He's looking around going, Oh, I'm so hungry. And it was at that moment that he saw a bird on a nearby tree. He looked at the rock on the ground he had found, looked at the bird and realized, I'm going to have some good eating today. Then, behind him, as he's about to throw the rock, he hears a little tweet tweeting. No, Prince Ivan, please do not kill us and eat us. But I'm so very hungry. Prince Ivan, if you spare us, we will owe you a favor. Fine, I won't kill you. I guess it's all right. So Prince Ivan began to walk along, even hungrier than before. And as he's walking along through the forest, trapezing over some roots and underbrush, there he sees some good eating, a lion's cub. He finds a nearby stick, and he realizes he's going to stab it. And then behind him, there's a loud roar. Prince Ivan, ah! do not think about eating my cubs. But I'm so hungry. Prince Ivan, if you spare my cubs, I will owe you a favor. Okay, I guess I don't want you to eat me anyway, that's fine. So Prince Ivan made a deal with Lioness. And Prince Ivan was so very hungry at that point, almost to the point of passing out. He had the shakes. And he's walking along and walking along. And he's a little bit delirious at that point. But there, in a nearby tree, he sees something beautiful. A bee's hive. And do you know what's in a bee's hive? Bees. Well, yes, but honey. So he looks down, sees a big boulder, and he goes, you know... I can throw this at the hive. I'm going to beat the bees and get their honey. It'll that, be fine. That delirium must be setting in. Yes, it is. But then, from behind him, here's a little whisper. Prince Ivan. Uh, yes? Do not break our hive and take our honey. But I'm so very hungry, please. But Prince Ivan, if you spare us, we will owe you a favor. Okay, I guess that's fine. And then Prince Ivan began to journey once more. Very conveniently, however, he was very close to Baba Yaga's hut, and yeah. it didn't matter as much at that point. Now, he did follow the rules of three, so it makes sense that the story <laughs> moved on from there. You can't have four animals. That would be too much. That would be far too many. <laughs> and so Prince Ivan walked up to Baba Yaga's hut, and right next to her hut, he saw the stable full of beautiful horses standing there. And as he walked up to the hut, the door opened wide. Oh, Prince Ivan, I see you have found your way to my humble hut. What brings you here? Um, I'm here to uh, get a horse, and I'm also hoping you have some food. Oh, yes, please, come inside, come inside. You look so skinny. I am. I feed you. 
And you want magical horse? Yes, yes, yes please. Uh, that is very easy. You just have to take care of my horses in the pasture for three days. Oh, I can do that. And make sure that none of them get out. Yeah, how hard can it be? And if any of them get out, I will kill you and eat you. Oh. Now please come inside and eat. Okay. So Prince Ivan had a lovely meal. And then went to bed, and then the next day, he went to go take the horses out to pasture. But when he took them out to the fields, they all immediately began to run away. Prince Ivan found a nearby rock, sat down, and began to cry. <laughs> but it wasn't long before, as he's crying, a nearby swarm of birds starts swooping at the horses, carousing them all back together. And Prince Ivan's quite pleased. But from nearby, he hears a tweet. Prince Ivan. Uh, yes, little birdie. We have repaid you our favor. Oh, thank you. You may go back to Baba Yaga's hut now. Okay, thank you for your help. You are welcome, Prince Ivan. So Prince Ivan goes back to the hut and says, Oh, Granny, Granny, I did good. I got all the horses. Oh, you have done a wonderful job, Prince Ivan. I know. Now eat and go to bed. Oh, oh but the sun is still up. I said eat and go to bed. Oh, okay. So Prince Ivan went to bed, but through the very thin walls of Baba Yaga's hut, he hears some yelling. Ah, oh, you stupid horses! What? You were supposed to run away and not allow him to catch you so I could eat him. We ran, and then there were birds, and they were packing, and it hurt. I don't want to hear any of your excuses. I'm Tomorrow, sorry. run into the forest. There is no way he'll be able to get you. Ooh, right, it's thick there. Good. Now, be ready for it. Now, the next day, Prince Ivan woke up, stretched, and was going to have a good day. He took the horses out to the nearby fields, seeing a nearby forest, and the horses began to graze. But it wasn't long before the horses took off, running through the thick forest. Prince Ivan realized he wouldn't be able to catch them, sat down on a nearby rock, and began to cry. <laughs> he thought he was going to get eaten, and from the nearby forest, Prince Ivan heard a loud roar, and suddenly he saw lions and tigers and bears and other things like that. Oh my. Oh my, indeed. Now, it wasn't long before there was a loud roar behind Prince Ivan as well, and he went, Oh, this is the end of me. Prince Ivan! <laughs> what? I have repaid your favor for sparing my cubs. Oh, you're the one from the forest before. Indeed. Oh, thank you. You are now safe to go back to Baba Yaga's hut. Oh, thank you, lioness. I'm glad I didn't eat your cub. <laughs> so Prince Ivan went back to Baba Yaga's hut, and he goes up to her and goes, Granny, Granny, I did so good. I got all the horses back. Oh, you have done a wonderful job. Prince I Ivan. know. Now, go eat your dinner. All right. And then go to bed afterwards. Oh, okay. Good night, Granny. Good night, Prince Ivan. And Prince Ivan went to bed while the sun was still high in the sky. But from the nearby wall, which was, as we said, very thin, he heard a yelling. Oh, you stupid horses! What now? You were supposed to run away from him. What happened this time? Uh, we ran, and then there were lions, and I was going to get eaten, and I got scared. I don't want to hear any of your excuses. Oh. Tomorrow, just run into the ocean. There is no way he'll be able to catch you. Oh, you're right. I don't think he knows how to swim. No, he definitely does not. Have you seen him? He's very skinny. <laughs> yes. So the next day, Prince Ivan woke up. Stretch, man, today's gonna be a good day. He took the horses out, and they were all feeding nicely, when suddenly they took off and ran into the nearby ocean, swimming away. Prince Ivan had never been taught how to swim, so he did the logical thing, sat down on a nearby rock, and began to cry. <laughs> and then suddenly there was an amazing sight. The entire sky turned black, and there was a great, enormous buzzing of bees. They swooped down over the, uh, the ocean, and you could hear the screams of the horses as they were stung over and over again, until they all came back. That's horrifying. Isn't it? What's better than bees? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> so Prince Ivan looked around and then saw a nearby bee that he recognized. You know, those bees are pretty different from each other. Absolutely. The bee says to him, Prince Ivan! Oh, yes, little bee. We have repaid our favor to you. Oh, thank you, little bee. But 
You cannot go back to Baba Yaga's hut because she is just going to kill and eat you. But she promised me a horse. But she is very angry. What you must do instead is go into the stable and steal one of the horses and run as fast as you can. Oh, I'm good at running. I can do that. Good. Now go quickly. So Prince Ivan did just that. He immediately ran back to Baba Yaga's hut, ignored going inside. It wasn't time for dinner. Went to the stable, found a horse, the strongest looking horse there, took it and rode off. Now, this was a magical horse, and magical horses are much faster than other horses. It's true. So he began to ride away, and it wasn't long until Baba Yaga realized that Prince Ivan had tricked her. She got in her magic mortar and pestle and began to fly off after him. There's no vehicle faster than that, you know. It's true. Now, Baba Yaga was actually gaining on Prince Ivan, but Prince Ivan was just a little bit ahead. So when he got to the magical river of fire, he waved his hanky and the bridge reappeared. He rode over it, and then he had an idea. He waved the magic hanky, but only a little bit, which cracks started to form in the bridge. And then Baba Yaga came speeding along. A mortar and pestle went onto the bridge, and there was a loud crack as you saw the stones falling away, along with Baba Yaga into the river of fire. And Baba Yaga died. Mm, doubt. Or did she? <laughs> Who <Unlikely. knows? laughs> So Prince Ivan, having made victory over Baba Yaga, realized it was time to save his wife and be the hero once more. He made his way to Koshai the Deathless Camp, who was conveniently not there, and says to his wife, I'm back! Prince Ivan, you are alive! Yeah, I got better. Uh, you have a magical horse now! Yeah, we should get on it and ride away! Yes, let's go as fast as we can! Now, far away in the distance, Koshai the Deathless Horse turns to him and says, Koshai! What? Prince Ivan has returned from the dead? I killed him! He's back now and he has a magical horse! Oh, we should go now! As fast as we can! And so, Koshai chased after Prince Ivan as quickly as he could. And Prince Ivan and Koshai raced through fields and canyons and valleys for hours upon hours. Eventually they came to a forest, though. And, unluckily for Koshai, there was a low-hanging branch, just a little bit too high for Prince Ivan to hit, but just a little too low for his own head. And there was a mighty crack as Koshai's head struck the branch and he went falling to the ground. And what is it that you think that Prince Ivan did? Got off his horse, gave his hand out and helped Koshai back up to do an honorable duel. No, he leapt off of his horse and then he clubbed him to death. Oh. And that is the story of the death of Koshai the Deathless. Wait, isn't he deathless? That's another story. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And that is the tale of the death of Koshai the Deathless from Slavic folklore. Thank you for listening to our story. Before we talk about anything else, we need to address a saddening fact. Every year, more and more of these stories vanish from collections forever to be lost to time. Our mission at the Scald Circle is to keep these stories alive for generations to come. If you want to help support our mission, we recommend taking a look at our Patreon page as noted in the description below. For even a dollar a month, you can help us keep these stories alive, while also earning great rewards. Also, remember to subscribe to us on your podcast app, and leave us a five-star rating if you enjoyed the story. It really helps us. A special thank you to all our Patreon supporters for your support this month. Without your contribution, we wouldn't be able to continue these stories, and we truly appreciate it. Visit thescaldcircle.com or our Facebook page to stay up to date with all our current events, news, and much more. Not only that, but you can also visit our story archive of every tale we have told. It's sorted by origin and region for the convenience of your listening pleasure. Once again, we want to thank you for listening to our story.